What is good? We're back. We got another. We got a tripod. We got a tripod yeah, here. Tripod. I thought it might be a quad pod, but we weren't. Gonna, we weren't. We weren't getting Matt tonight. He had uh, wife had pre-existing obligations. Uh, but Wives. Matt will be back soon. Uh, but today we're gonna hop on do a little shorter thing. We got to get JB out of here. Uh, but uh, I, there hasn't been any bigger mover in the preseason thus far than Damian Pierce. Um, he's vaulted all the way into the first round of these later rookie drafts and pretty much every single one that I've taken part in the last week or two. Um, but the Twitter brigade has certainly pushed back against this notion hard um, under mostly the pretense that under no circumstance should you buy Pierce for Damian Pierce for a first this year, next year, or ever. Um, so to throw that side, I know this guy will do a very good job of explaining and hitting all the points and, and deliver it with some uh, gumption. Panache. Um, John Bauer, JB, <laughs> how you doing, Hit buddy? Him on the Twitter club at at the Bauer Club. What's up, doing, guys? Man? Good to see w- you. When when you guys reached out to me to jump on and talk about Damian Pierce, I was excited, and, and I messaged you guys. So, who runs the the Twitter handle? Um, it's usually him. I'll probably me. try and say my name if I'm talking in there. All right. So I, I messaged Casey, and I was like, "Hey, like, if you want to jump on tonight, this being yesterday, I'm ready to go." Like, I was that excited, and then I was like, "If you want to jump on at like five today, I can do that." And he's like. I got to (laughs) work. So like, that's how excited I am. I've tried to push this up twice now. I'm ready to go. I love it. Um, So where, where, where can we find you and, you know, give, give us the quick preamble before we get rolling here. Cause the gloves might come off, you know, see, I didn't even care about that. Cause I'm just so excited to be on the show with you guys, (laughs) but yeah, find me at the Bauer club on Twitter. Uh, I'm one of the hosts of dynasty theory. It's at dynasty theory FF on Twitter and Instagram. We have a great Patreon, a great discord community approaching. I'm in there. It's active. It's good. It's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of info going down. So definitely check that out. Appreciate that. But yeah, we're just, you know, 24 seven conversations, uh, pushing content and super excited for the regular season here quickly approaching. Yeah. It's like it's already it's here. Our, it's our, yeah. We, I was like, what are we going to do? And then I was like the Damian Pierce stuff. And then I was like, well, let's, let's get JB on beforehand. I think we're going to try to do some more stuff in season with, with JB here. If you mind me calling you JB. Uh, I I've been called a lot worse. So that's okay. fine. Okay. Um, all right. So give me the, give me the, the Pierce, the Pierce rundown. So I, I went through, and like I said, I was ready to jump on with you guys yesterday. First of all, and, sorry. That was a bad, sorry. Very sorry. That was a bad, I, I, I alluded to it in the, in the little intro that I had, but basically right now we're saying either the case against or the case maybe for trading a, any first for Damian Pierce. So sorry, take the floor away. So just everybody's clear on what we're, what we're doing. So my big thing here, it's more, it's gravitating towards the 23 class itself. So sure. it was, I believe the tweet was, do not trade a 23 first for Damian Pierce. And in the intro, you mentioned 24, 25, you know, 25, heck, I might not even be around by then. <laughs> yeah. You know, None of uh, I know who knows what's going to happen, but really for the 23 class. So I have a lot of things I want to talk about here. Sure. Uh, if you guys want to jump in at any point, obviously it's your show. I don't know why I'm telling yeah. you how to run it. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll jump in. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so for Damian Pierce, I want to start with the college profile. And you guys sure. know I was big with that. Mm-hmm. Talked about that a lot with our rookie mocks that we did. But in at Florida, he averaged just over nine touches per game. All right. And that could have been one, maybe because he isn't capable for one reason or another of getting more of a workload or two, maybe Florida, they kind of look at it the way these other bigger schools do and use that as a uh, recruiting factor like Georgia. They don't run their running backs into the ground in college. And that's a reason that running backs like to go there. So maybe it's one of those situations. But from a rushing market share perspective, he never eclipsed 30 percent. And that's a red flag for me. I've told you guys about my spreadsheet with the thresholds. That's one of those data points. The positive, it's not all negative. The positive side of that is while it was limited usage at Florida, he was still very efficient compared to the rest of the running back room whenever he had the opportunity. Uh, But not only from the rushing market share perspective, 
and I don't even want to say his name, but you know, I was big on this with Kenny Walker. Mm-hmm. I know Jay, Jay's ready to Jay, Jay's ready to jump it through the screen on at me here, <laughs> but the the max reception market share. This is another one. Damian Pierce just didn't hit those numbers that I was looking at. So this goes back to even before the his opportunity. Is, his is even worse than Kenny Three Sticks, right? His target uh, share at, at so, four point eight percent. I think it's even worse than Kenny Three Sticks. So it, it's not it's good. it's it's not good. And you know, so that kind of leads me into Houston as a team. This right. team, they're projected under five wins this season. You look at the Vegas lines, they are not expected to do well. And I bring that up because, one, if you're going to win games, you're going to have opportunities inside the five-yard line. And those are the money touches for running backs. This team, and I know Davis Mills is a, a year more mature. They have Brandon Cooks, obviously, Nico Collins developing a little bit. Mm. Brevin Jordan, who knows what happens there. Right. But this team, it, they should make strides moving forward. But they had five carries inside the five last year. Yeah. There were 35 individual players with more carries inside the five than Houston had as an entire team. So not only are they not expected to do well as a, from a season-long perspective, but they're going to struggle game in and game out with those high-value uh, touches for the running backs. This team scored 29 offensive touchdowns last year. That ranked 30th. Even yep. if we bumped up to like 35, it's still going to be detrimental to a player like Damian Pierce, uh, who just we mentioned it doesn't get that heavy involvement in the passing game dating back to Florida. And when this team was trailing last year, who knows what it's going to look like with the new offensive coordinator, but maybe a lot of the same philosophies will carry over. They threw at a rate of 66% when trailing last year. That was in the upper half. So with this team trailing, With the limited touches inside the five, inside the 10 that Damian Pierce could be getting, I don't know how much we're going to see him on third downs. And it goes to the preseason usage. This is my third point, guys. So not only are we looking at Florida, (laughs) not only are we looking at how bad this team could be, but the preseason usage, he was only in on nine passing plays in the preseason. He ran five routes, one target, zero receptions throughout the entire preseason. And you have guys like Rex Burkhead, Royce Freeman, Daria Agumbawale. I would say about that one. in Damian Pierce's direction, but I mean, you, you, you use that however you see fit. But, but those are guys yeah, that guy. have shown guy, Rex Burkhead, <laughs> that when healthy is going to be utilized in the passing game. And I don't see that role switching over to Damian Pierce. But I mean... It, it, even Rex Burkhead at his at his elderly age, he has proven to be a capable receiving back. And Marlon Mack leaving, getting cut, he didn't even have a target in the preseason. So I don't think Marlon Mack leaving is going to give the bump that we're going to see in terms of his inflated market value. That's just my perspective. Yeah. So would you say before all of this that you like Damian Pierce as a prospect at all, though? So I had him Mm-mm, couldn't have no, 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 no. So pre-draft and this, it kind of went to the class in general, but I had him in that 206 to 210 range. So by no means was I saying even an early second, but I'm getting screenshots that he's going 102 in yeah. rookie drafts. I mean, uh, Casey, you mentioned 105, 106. Like there's people that are going above and beyond that. Yeah. So if you're taking him that early, it is because of the opportunity at hand. You didn't care about the profile. You don't care about Houston as a team. You don't care about the preseason usage. So that brings me to the production outlook. And Mitch and I, Mitch at Dynasty Theory with me, we do our annual projections. And right now, even with Marlon Mack out of the picture, we have him at 11.6 points per game. That would be running back 30. That is not a difference-making running back. That's barely above Jamal Williams. It's yep. barely above guys that are going to cost you significantly less. Go get Rashad Penny. I, I know that's a, a kind of a, a touchy subject here, but go get somebody like that. That's going to be cheaper. Get a Melvin Gordon for crying out loud. Right. Um, so uh, the, the immediate production outlook, I don't think it's going to be what people are looking for. And this Houston team has one of the most difficult schedules in 2022. 
And it is a little dangerous to sit here in August and have the the audacity to think conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is their strength to schedule. They're going to be horrible. It, it's going to be flipped upside down. But as it stands today, sure. using that data point, looking at that, it is a more difficult schedule. And if you look at like their first six, seven games, they're going against the Chargers. They're going against the Raiders. They're going against, oh, geez, I should have written this one down. There were there were several teams there that I look at it and I'm like, they're yeah, going to have to throw. They get the Colts twice a year. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they obviously get Jacksonville, uh, but you know the division is not super strong. But I mean, the, 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 I forget. I don't know. I don't forget which conference they play. You know how every team kind of usually plays it. Right, right. Conference. I forget which one it is. But yeah, I mean, I, I I don't get too caught up in preseason strength of schedule. Um, I guess there's a big asterisk there. Right, there is. Right. Um, but you know, part of my thing is is that I think that a lot of people. At, with the leadoff question of did you like Pierce? I think that's a fair two six. Two possibly six is, that's a good. Yeah, that, that's pretty. That's pretty high. A lot higher than I thought you would have for would sure. Have had him that you know. I know that Jason wasn't a huge um, Pierce guy, and then he gets to the Texans, and then there's a little bit of under the surface bubbling of hey, okay, there's there's a path to opportunity here, um, and you know as we like as as it seems the analytic community likes to say, opportunity typically trumps talent. Um, is, is something that they like to go with. Um, but I guess part of it is, is a lot. I feel like a lot of these guys just didn't like Pierce to begin with. So now there's no, like he's, there's no way that he possibly could be good. And if it was, you know, somebody that they would have been into, like who, who did you like pre combine? Let's say like, who was, who was, was, was Spiller one of your, like your two or Kyron or pre, pre NFL draft. I like Spiller a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I did. let's, Let's say Spiller was doing what Damian Pierce was doing right now in the preseason and Eckler was still there. Like maybe, maybe not you, but I feel like a lot, maybe if somebody was a more of a Spiller guy, like I just feel like there's a little bit of like, you know, I didn't like him. So I still don't like him. And obviously all these factors are there to tell you that he hit, he doesn't hit all these markers. So there's, you know, we're just sticking with that. He can't be good where, you know, he's kind of come in and been like, Hey, he had a path to a situation. And all of a sudden, he grabbed that thing by the horns and has looked really good. Now, granted, it's the preseason, and granted, he is on the Texans. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, if he's going to be the guy, which, I mean, last year, you know, they were obviously not trying to do a whole lot in that organization. I mean, the the, the backfield was Rex Burkhead and Phil Lindsay at one point and uh, David Johnson, David Johnson, Johnson and yep. just, you know, Nothing, nothing good going on there. Now I do think there is some some hope on an offensive line there. We'll see what Mills ha- has to say about it. But I guess at the end of the day, like to the college coach point, like maybe Dan Mullen's just an idiot. Has a coach never misused a player ever? Like, and if 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 Dan Mullen's doesn't misuse him a little bit, you know, maybe he does start checking some of those boxes, and maybe we're not having some of this conversation. So it's just like all of a sudden, I just feel like you got to at least put some context in the situation where he had it. He looked like he might have a chance. Now he looks like he really has a chance. I feel like the Marlon Mack cut almost is, is an, a little bit of a nod of saying, Hey, we're, we're okay. Now maybe Marlon Mack was just has never really fully recovered from the Achilles. And they, they knew it inside that building. They kept and, Royce Freeman over him. I think that right. shows how bad Mack really was. Right. But to, to think that, you know, I, I feel like, that they didn't that, and anything can happen. We could put this out tomorrow and they could trade for somebody. Uh, but you know, to have Rex Burkhead at 32, who, who's fine. Uh, but, and then dare, uh, dare, what's the guy? Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah. Chris Freeman be the other guys in this backfield. It's like, man, we could, we could really be seeing a guy who, who is their guy. Now that's not a great offense. I, I can concede that, but like, let's say that you're, you know, a, 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 a a team that's 110, 111, 112 um, kind of range finishing this year. I'm just saying, and, and I know I get the 23 classes stack, um, but, you know, there's there's no chance that you'd be willing to spend, if you're a really good team coming back to gear up and you, you we want to add one more running back to that stable, and you could certainly buy a Melvin Gordon or one of those running backs that you said, but, you know, there's no, there's no shiny object here. That's, that's kind of a, you're signing, you're signing a one and done kind of deal here where Pierce there, there's some, at least some shininess, which can be good and bad. Cause we don't know, 
Um, but there's at least some shininess to what he could be doing, and, and he could really emerge. And, you know, the, the Texans' offense wasn't any good, but Brandon Cooks had 90 catches, 1,000 yards, and six touchdowns or whatever. So, you know, I, I feel like we can we can move forward. Now you can say Lovey Smith is probably the fall guy and isn't going to be the coach for long, but I don't think that was the Lovey Smith. They're not going to let him. I think Nick Casario probably was drafting, pulling all the strings in the draft. So if, I think if he took Damian Pearson, it seems like a hit, then they'll probably be okay with – you can never, it takes, you never know if they're going to replace somebody, but I feel like the replacement, if he plays well, is is probably pretty safe. Uh, you can never really say that. And I guess because he's a fourth rounder, you would disagree. Um, but I, I just, I just feel like the context and the situation that I feel like I can take all of the shit that happened with that. He didn't hit these markers and crumble it up and throw it in the trash at this point. Like he's showing you on the field that he's, he's, capable of playing in this at this level now it is the preseason but he's not just playing at a good level in the preseason he's playing at a much higher level than everybody else in the preseason it would seem like he's got he's the way he's moving out there we we talk about it. i know the analytic guys don't like to, to but it's like watching him move around out there he clearly looks like he belongs the cuts are defined they're dirty the run through contact is very good I feel like the fact that he caught 17 and 19 balls in in the amount of time that he played, I feel like 20 is like a decent threshold for catches for a college running back a season. Is it not like it depends on the volume from the overall offense? Right. Because, Um, again, I look at it from a market share perspective. Sure. But I mean, I I just feel like it's not like I I feel like I don't know why he isn't can't be the third down. Like he's great in pass protection. That's all you heard from the senior bowl was how great the pass protection was head and shoulders above everybody else. Why can't he be on third down? He's not a liability in in that respect. And he seems like the the pass catching is just fine. They just didn't necessarily use him all that much to get the market share, but he still caught. It's not like he caught it's, It's not like he was Kenny three sticks in the matter of he only caught you know, nine balls. It's almost it's almost double digits for two years in a row. Um, it's not every it's single the, target last year, which is pretty good. Zero drops, eighteen targets, eighteen catches. Right? Not not that many, not that many snaps. You know, overall. So it's it's hard to gobble up target share, I guess, when you have have when you yeah, don't well, how, play how that. Does, how much, does that work? You know? If you're if you're and if, if you're, you're on, in there on third down in college and, and have a good pass protection, you know, rep. Does that does that help counter? The well, negative market share. How well, how does how would you how do you define the market share if if he's only get like you, you take the overall amount of snaps that he had with the overall amount of no, it's the targets like, for the team no. and how many he got right since he's not playing a lot how do you determine but why that that's my question why isn't he playing and if let's say it is just the coaching with him in the passing game then he should be getting a heck of a lot more touches on the ground and we could write it off that Florida just misused him then why didn't we see anything from the preseason usage in terms of the, one target in the preseason? If that's well, something they wanted to do that much, he had eight attempts or 11 attempts, you know, I mean, he didn't even play. Well, week two I, at I, all. I feel like we would have we seen if, if you, if you are, if, if he's, if, if he's what I'm presuming he's going to be and be on the field with them a lot, like I'm not, I don't need him to be, catching Alvin Kamara like percentages to be great. He would need to be, but like if he's going to be out there with the amount of time that I think he's going to be and be closer to a a workhorse in the league, as far as the the amount of percentage that he stays on the field for that team, I just need him to catch like three dump downs a game and get three, three for 30 some games. And you know, maybe, maybe it's three for 10, some games, just a little bit of something else to add to the fact that, Hey, maybe they won't get too many valuable touch opportunities. Like you were, were saying there. I mean, that is a low, it's not, I don't expect it to be in the middle of the pack. All of a sudden you're, you're correct in assuming that they'll probably still be, you know, down low there. Uh, So, you know, Good. But, but yeah, it's, it's not just the, the, the high value touches, which we talked about, but we have them in 33 targets. It's not like we're sending them out there saying you're not going to get any targets. But yeah, I just feel like the amount of time that he would play if he's if I think if, if he's doing what I think, I think there would be well over 33 targets. I, I would be shocked if he's built for a work, work ooh, workhorse role. I really would. I mean, it. I I would be shocked if he comes in, absolutely shocked if he comes in and puts up 50 targets. And that's sitting there right there at a little over three a game. 
I you, think that's you just, I think that's a good over under. You just don't think you think what the frame can't hold up or what do you just just because you've never seen it he can't do it. Or Antonio what's the, Gibson only had like seventy something total touches and he was fourth in attempts last year in the NFL. You know it's not like it, it can't yeah, be done. But, but we had that upside in terms of the receiving work from Antonio Gibson in college. We saw that. I mean right. I think, but I we think also Pierce had the downside of not knowing if he could play running back. There, there is that downside, sure. For, but for Antonio for Gibson for wasn't going up to 102 in rookie drafts. Like he and, was and you see, first at the end of the of the off season, though, you, people were definitely using like 110, 111, 112 on him. And, you know? and that's I'm not fine. saying you should, I'm definitely not saying you should do one two. And I wanted to come in here and side with JB. Like I, I get why people don't like him, and I'd be very hesitant to trade a 23 first given the the, the stature of that class. Um, and I get that. Very low usage, but on 87 attempts, he broke. He was charted with 39 forced missed tackles. That's that's a lot. Which I know um, people you know, like that. There's, there's a lot of comparisons here, and I love it because Damian Pierce, fourth run running back opportunity. People are excited. We went through this last year with Michael Carter. We, we went, went through, through it as a, Elijah Mitchell. What was that? I said we also went through it with Elijah Mitchell. There, there's always going to be outliers. And if Stevenson, you th- that's yeah. kind of what I'm you, getting at. And Ramondre Stevenson still trading it and maybe an early second, maybe. So, right? okay, so but, if Ramondre Stevenson, if 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 um they trade if they trade if they traded Damian Harris, would you trade a first for Ramondre Stevenson? No, absolutely not. Why? Because that what what we've seen with New England. So that, that's a good question. First of all, back to the Michael Carter situation. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. So fourth round running back, we always think, okay, this team's going to make a good decision, right? They have a running back. They have a lot of other holes they have to fill. We we rely on these teams to make those sound decisions. They don't always do that. Next year, Houston, two firsts, a second, two thirds. With this running back class, it would not shock me to see. And this is, let's say. With this presumed running back class, because we've seen Najee and ETN come back to school. We've seen all of a sudden it was supposed to be great. And all of a sudden, Bijan comes back because they like what Texas is doing. And this guy goes back. And all of a sudden, this guy's not quite as good as everybody thought they were. And all of a sudden, there's going to be not quite as good as you thought. I'm not, these, all these classes have been really good, in my opinion, the last few years. Um, And 23 is slated to be good. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just. No, there are, there are all these what ifs, and I get it. But strictly, you know, we, we talked about everything with Damian Pierce himself. Mm-hmm. But from a 2023 first perspective, let's say Damian Pierce goes out and he's running back 24 on the season. All right. He shows uh, the ability to catch the ball, not just the ability, but they use him that way. OK, right. they, then in April, they don't draft another running back in the first three rounds. What is Damian Pierce trading for in terms of? 23 picks ceiling absolute ceiling would be 107 108 for me absolute yeah, ceiling I, I can't so, I, don't, I don't have it that far out so I couldn't tell you but well I'll so let, let that that's where I am 107 108 now when we're in a 12 team super flex league and people always say oh I'm trading a late first there is so much variance if you don't get that first round by even if you think your team is good for uh, sure. it's me one it's me 109 one it very well could be 107 108 Mm-hmm. So now you traded that pick. You landed the 107, 108. Best case scenario, in my opinion, as we sit here today, would be Damian Pierce trading for that pick right there. But I, I think a lot of people look at possible outcomes over probable outcomes. And when you look at it from a probability standpoint, there is a better chance than not that he he's he's not going right. to be no, going I, for that. I, first. I understand that on that point. But I guess what I'm saying is, is like, I just feel like, you you can't take every single one of those things and put them in a box and just say this is what it is. It's not, and, and it is. It's well, less probable for him to work out for sure. But like from all of a sudden, from what we're seeing and for the opportunity that he's getting, like I feel like you have to then like it's he's not create. It's not this isn't Josh Kelly being drafted in the fourth round and doing what he did. This is and this this is all of a sudden I got a path to good opportunity and I've been showing really well in the limited exposure that I've had, like more than really well, like the best can he, can he be a t- in the preseason, which doesn't make, you know, Terrace Marshall whom, you know, whatever, but I'm just saying like, t- can he I, be a top 18 back this year? Do you think on a per yeah, game basis? 100%. See, I, 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 I think that's the, the possible over probable for me. 
Because he's yeah, definitely going to get. So I, I get always, that there might not be that a bunch of red zone touches, but he did have twelve touchdowns in Florida. He showed the ability to punch in short yardage situations. I, he did that in the preseason. He's going to get all the goal line work he can handle. Let's not so act like five, five carries. carries. Five, five there carries. Gonna be a lot from what you're presuming from carrying over from last year. Uh, but you know, no, I mean, go go ahead. I was just going to say, let's not act like Royce Freeman or. Well, Rex Burkhead are the most healthiest people ever. Like right. he, no, I they're absolutely 50, not. I think fifty targets is a good over under. You know, I could I could be right there on that, and and that's all all you kind of need. You know, I mean, we need some type of fun bet. We need to figure out a sure. st- stakes. I know I, we we're know you got to go. We're gonna man. get you on, and you'll be on some more, and we'll we'll figure we the stakes out. out of here. Sure. He's got a hard out that we already yeah. just flew um, by. I don't oh. even care about the clock. I'm all riled up. <laughs> isn't the NFL though? And I get I under like I coming into this like I understand all of the the. Pro- probable kind of stuff. And I understand like, I'm not anti-analytics by any mean. I want to know about them. I want to see them and I want to, but I just feel, (laughs) I just feel like it's just not all created equally. And you have to add some context to like, like I said, he's not Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly was a fourth rounder. I get fucking rid of him. I don't care about Josh Kelly, but like there's, you know, there, there is Elijah Mitchell's and Michael Carter wasn't bad, but I was never excited about him being, he, he didn't a, really profile like a workhorse. A, not the, and, and numbers not the, show that Pierce, Pierce does. Either. And Damian Pierce, Pierce does neither. The frame does though. The frame it, says that he can handle the workload. You know what I mean? Like he's, and, he was, and I, I would love to 18 to two twenty. I would love to know why, again, when he was a sophomore, LaMichael Pirine at Florida got workhorse like numbers. He had 40 catches in a season. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't have a great. I just coaches never miss, I, never misuse a player is really the all I can say for that. Like it just it happens from time to, you know. Why was Mark Ingram at one point never used for the Saints? It was like he was having sex with Sean Payton's wife, and then all of a sudden the levy broke and Mark Ingram was good. It was that he wasn't not good. They just wasn't. I don't know why they weren't using him. Love Didn't Mark make any Ingram. sense. Right? Why was Ohio State not using Jameson Williams? Why was Why was Joe Burrow have to transfer? Why Why can't uh, show up in a well, candy paint ride. What was the Jada kiss? Why, why'd you why'd you let the Terminator win the election? Yeah, come on, pay attention. Come on, pay attention. Yeah. Why why Kobe had to kiss that broad? You know, like why uh I don't know. I should have left Kobe out of that. Maybe I'll take that out. R.I.P. Kobe. Sorry. Um, but isn't isn't the NFL kind of filled with you know, I wouldn't say filled, but like isn't there a certain percentage of like I know growing up throughout watching this game, like uh, uh, you know, isn't it great because of the outliers, because of the guys who come in and, and, and you said it, JB, you said outlier. There are outliers. And that's no. kind of what we're, we're kind of talking about but here like, is I trying to find those outliers. Right. And playing the probabilities. I get it. And you look at the athletic profile and the, the combine numbers aren't great. Uh, but when you look at him on the field, he definitely looks more athletic than what he'd look like in shorts. Uh, th- th- those numbers shows, you know, and when you when you watch him both in college and the preseason, you know, he he's breaking ta- tackles and stay his contact balance is awesome and he plays tough and he pass protects and there's there's no reason to necessarily necessarily take him off the field he caught like literally every ball they threw at him in college handsy looking catches like i'm i was watching i went back and watched all 22 tape to prepare for this and like those were the best plays he had were the catches that he was making and that the- video <laughs> clip was what like 15 seconds long so he didn't have to <laughs> didn't think no, all that there, there's four all 22s i mean alabama texas a and m georgia i'm just messing with you He's he's who, what was the other one? Oklahoma, like dude, good good schools he's playing against. Now they're not that long because he didn't play that much. But every time he touched the ball, he forced a missed tackle, Look. and every time they threw it to him, he caught it. And and there's nobody like you can't a 32 year old Rex Burkhead who's, yeah, who's definitely going to get hurt I, at some point, I, and I, Royce Freeman I, who you know had I, his day. That's over. To go like, even further here, like I I traded away the right to get Damian Pierce at eight or nine. I did. I traded a first next year, a second next year, Dalton Schultz. And I swapped the, I picked up a two five and gave away the two seven. Look, I'm not saying that you, I'm, uh, you just, got the first next year. I got the first, the second Dalton Schultz and two five. Um, and you could have taken Pierce and I could have taken Pierce and I traded away the two seven basically in that deal. Um, I so, want to know how you're not locked up for robbery. Where are the but, authorities for this? Well, that, that's, I mean, that's the, well, I, I guess what my point was, the guy like, took Pierce. I'm not like, he was so into Pierce. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying if I have a really good team and you're right, there is so much luck involved in the fantasy playoffs that it's, I hate when you project things, but like 
if overall I feel like I have a good team and we're moving forward, I guess I'm not necessarily too scared to essentially at this first, at this point, he's a first round pick this year. So you're really just trading a first for a first. But it, it's you know? you're taking on more risk when you have you certainly moving, are, but you're you're moving the pick with the insulated value. If you truly believe that you have a contender, there are other options. You sure. can one hang on to the pick as a liquid asset, move it as the season progresses, see where you have a hole open up. Uh, but also, again, if you truly believe Damian Pierce is going to win you weeks, if he's going to give you that above replacement level production, sure, I get it. I don't see it that way. I see him, let's say best case scenario, he's mixed into that low end running back too. Let's say running back 24, which is a realistic range of outcome. It certainly is. Uh, but I, I just think there was minimal upside in terms of moving him based on the, the range of outcomes, like I said, for that 23 pick. Right. I, I know we we think every pick we move is going to be late. I, I love no, the fact I, I certainly don't. But no, no, I, I say we like the yeah, dynasty. Yeah. I mean, mine are for sure. <laughs> yeah. Never not made the playoffs. Um, so no. that's my spiel that I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, one last point I'll make. It is so hard to find a running back, even well, that's RB 24. Like some teams, that's all they need, you know, is like one or more running back to plug in because that's, I'm stacked everywhere else. And everyone in this league only has three decent running backs. If that. You know what I mean? It's just so hard that that's the last argument and if, if, that I can if, hear. If if he does look like he belongs, I feel, and, and he takes off because of the scarcity of the position and it is so hard to trade for, like, you, if he does take off, I mean, yeah, if the 23 class is as good as we say it is, you might be able to straight up trade him for one. But there's there's a chance that if he takes off, like, I mean, all this, there isn't a really good running back in the league that you could just get one trade one first for at this point. Like you might be able to get some of the old guys, but like any of the really, really good. And we're, and we're at kind of a weird spot with them. We've talked about it a lot. Like we haven't got a changing of the guards for the running backs. It's at the Alvin Kamara generation is still hanging on. We quite, quite have, you know, we haven't the gotten Akers, the Dobbins, Dobbins and the Akers haven't. and the Jacobs and the Sanders. They never really quite got where we want them to be. So it, it, we're at a little weird spot. So anyway. I know you got to get the hell out of here. I, I I'm getting texts. People, people are outraged. <laughs> I know, but I, I, we said we'd get you out of here at 8.50. It's eight. It's 9.07. May I'm, I read to the game? I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, you, I'm sticking around because these are great conversations. Yeah. yeah. Well, and really it, like, appreciate you, it, man. It's not just, oh, yeah, JB, that's that's good. That's good. You're getting my blood pressure up. That yeah. means it's it's great content for me. Right. I love it. Like, that's what yeah, we that's try not we to be to have super on, agreeable. Man. I'm not going to make an argument to make an argument. And, you know, we're going to be chatting throughout the season, just trying we to are, have some we fun. I'm sure get we'll some agree. more JB, baby. We'll agree on plenty of things. But this one, I, I knew we would have, you know, a little. And, and you're not you're certainly not wrong by any means. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. I'm just trying. <laughs> I, to, I've never been wrong. <laughs> this this <laughs> just started with the, with the notion on Twitter that, that that he could never it could never ever work out, and that's the final nail in the coffin, no matter what. And so it got Casey's blood kind of pumping. It's like nobody <laughs> thinks that this could happen. It definitely could work out, and there's actually a lot of arguments to be made for it. I'm on the fence. I still don't. Ah, they just cut Marlon Mack. That definitely didn't move the needle for you at all. No, uh, again, it, it's. I don't get I, that doesn't make sense to me because I thought Marlon Mack actually looked OK. Like, I think Marlon Mack's like an OK player. I mean, what does this mean for Marlon Mack? You know, like <laughs> if, if he were even remotely decent, why not bump Royce Freeman off the roster? It's that's fair. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what I, the I contract that situation point, was, but. but uh, get, get out of here, man. We, yeah. we appreciate it. Go, Guys, go. Thank you. Oh, this boys. is awesome. They're going to be mad. Out They're going to be times. mad already that you're, that you're going to come over here every once in a while in season. So uh, now nah, that's our little secret. They went off yeah. to know. <laughs> they don't watch our show. All right. See you guys. Thank you. Check yeah. him out at the dynasty theory at John at the Bauer club. Appreciate you, buddy. So, we again, we really appreciated JB joining us. He's out of here. He had to run, like we just said. But uh, we really appreciate y'all. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. We're going to be getting JB on. I think we're going to get a little more J Mike on during the season. So we're going to get a rotating cast of guys. We're going to be doing some live streaming, trying to do that once a week in season, either Sunday or Monday. Just kind of recap, BS, talk about what's going on, have some fun, uh, get involved with you guys, be able to interact. 
five star review for a t shirt. We're still doing that. So send those in. Oh, yeah, can, I need to make those a drawing ramped up already. a little bit. Uh, we need to do another drawing. So we'll get those out. We and attached with some really nice emails from some people as well. So we appreciate all of you guys. Hey, y'all been squeezing questions in there too. That's smart. I've yeah. been answering them. You yeah. know, I don't usually answer questions. That's not on the Discord because I just yeah. don't have time. We're not, we're not going to bed by Bath and Beyond. You know, right. I don't know how much time we're going to have. Right. But but uh, you hit me with a five-star review and an email or, or a DM on Twitter or Instagram, and you throw in a, a dynasty question, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm figure out how to answer that bitch. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm not going to take them off, but I'll pull them to the side. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate JB coming on and yucking it up with us. We knew he would have a different take. And, and really, it, you know, I get it, man. Those numbers. I, I do. I don't want to seem like I'm just being like, "What are you talking about? This doesn't make any." The probability, you know, has never been good, but but you're already seeing that change a little bit with the way that they're they're, they're using him in the preseason with the with the moves they made. They didn't trade for a running back. They actually cut a guy who could take carries away from him. The youngest, probably most possible dude. I, I just don't see Rex Burkhead crushing carries and shit. Like, right. and I get that they're not going to be that great, but. You know, he's going to get all the scoring opportunities. He can catch. He can pass protect. I agree. He's not super explosive. You know, he had a but long he, of 27 yards. No, last but year, he looks but. plenty explosive. He looks so decisive. And just we talk about he just looks like he moves a little different out there. And the, you see it. You know it when you see it. And now I know there, there are times you can pause it and see this big hole that he didn't hit. But that's every single running back. Right. But he makes he finds a way. He is usually getting a field great after he contact. has some torque to eke yeah. out two or three more yards. Like he averaged, I think, almost six yards a carry. And it was like every carry was six yards. You know right. what I mean? It was almost like a little bit better James Robinson or right. Brian Brian Bob B. Brian Robinson. Robinson, which damn. Yeah. Big huge bummer for Brian right. Robinson. Ridiculous. So, but uh I, I wanted to side with JB, but you know, it's so hard to find a running back. All my teams, I have like three viable guys and then some other guys that maybe could possibly help me out. And I know that all three of those dudes are not going to stay healthy. And everyone is always trying to find a running back. We saw that in these late rookie drafts. Brian Robinson before the before the shooting was was a first round pick because of the negative Antonio Gibson buzz. Bra Damian Pierce, because of all the run he's getting, shoved up into the first round. James Cook went way higher than we ever thought. I mean that we would ever do James Cook and He's all the ones that like we one did. Four. Well, I haven't seen him go past one six in any rookie drafts right. we're doing right now because of because you know, he's a running back running you backs. know they need running backs Isaiah Spiller's getting pushed up Rashad White's getting pushed actually Rashad White hasn't been getting pushed yeah. up as 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 Spiller has uh for whatever reason but it's just every there's all these great first round talented wide receivers are shoving back down towards the back because Which people, I don't are, agree with. I'm not I saying no. That, I, know, I love because it because I got these later first picks. Me too. Picks, it's been nice and to I've been trade just around and the just, fuck up. Right. I got Traylon Burks. So I never thought I could get Traylon Burks at like one eight. You yeah. know, it's un unbelievable. Like right. I had a choice between Burks, Pickens, Jameson at one eight. It's like what the fuck's going on yeah, here? Three running backs go before you, right? Or four, five wild. running backs almost. Just fucking wild. And yeah. so it's not. That's not right. I'm not saying do any of that right. shit. But but the point of People needing running backs. People need running backs so much. And even if it's RB24, the thirst, the thirst is, you know, like unquenchable. If you throw in an RB2 into your lineup with an already good squad. I get it. You know, I get it. And the 23 class, oh my God, oh my God. But if you're in some of these home leagues, I don't think these dudes even know what the fuck is going on with this 23 class. Like right. some of them might, right. but if unless you're on Dynasty Twitter, like right. you might not know how fucking stacked it's and supposed to every, be. Every class is stacked. This one's been pretty wild for a while and we just like i said in this thing we never all it just takes a couple of guys to maybe not be as quite as good as we thought they were and then a couple of guys to just say hey i'm coming back like we're getting paid now what like i could make the nil millions? that was I, mean, I tried to get that in but we were all yelling at the same right. time but nil like bryce young's getting paid more than jalen hurts you know like maybe these boys come back maybe texas you know is like hey this, here's several extra million dollars a bunch bro of money. Like, we got we right. got sark we look we got quarterbacks Fucking the Mannings coming. Right. Like, right. I mean, NIL could completely flip this thing on its head. So while I get it, at the same time, people are so thirsty for running backs, yourself included. Tell me you don't need a running back right now on your team. Nope. You know what I mean? Nope. So I, I nope, zero RB to say that day. it couldn't be that it couldn't work out. He definitely is in line for opportunity. Throw, you know, 
there's been guys who'd had a smaller workload in college come in and do better in the NFL outliers. I get it, but that's what we're about here. We're trying to find these outliers because I don't want to just well, miss just, just, on some of the best players in the game. Not right. to say that Damon Pierce is going to be, but some of the best players in the game have been outliers like Jalen Waddle is an outlier. Like DK Metcalf, outlier. Right. Like I mean, some of the best players in the game. Not, not, not. They're not quite on the level of not of quite what, of what this would be. Not quite. There, there was a lot of other things that were really great about those guys. Where this is a little bit different. Also, not scenario. saying you should take him one five, which we were doing with Waddle right. and DK. Like you know, it's a little different. He's just right. shoved back. But I mean, end of the first all, it seems like late. almost every year we could almost find a fourth round running back that does pretty well. Like I mean, Elijah Mitchell was six ten. You know, you know? Andre Stevenson was was right there. Um, and and, to, and like, Elijah Mitchell and he, was right there. Like, JB didn't want to say he would send a, a, a one out for Ramondre, but if they cut Damian Harris, like Ramondre was awesome last year. Yeah, who you Harris got after out. that? And and James White's fucking done, and they're talking about how Harris uh, Ramondre slimmed down, and they're prepping him, which he has a terrible target share in college too. Like, right, that's why but he's shown him that up, he but. can. But I wanted Catch him to balls. say yes so we could be like, well, what about his target share? And I just feel well, like he knows about that target after, share. He doesn't want to. After these guys get in the league, you no longer give a shit and they perform well. You no longer give a shit about any of those markers that they hit. It's just like, oh, they're good. Like, you know, so whatever. I mean, it was it was a fun conversation. <laughs> I, I, if you're I, playing I, the probabilities and you just want to look at the numbers and, and check off boxes and play it that way, it's, you know, if you can get, if you can hit 55 percent of the time, you might make some money. But then what are you what are you watching football for? You well, know? that's what I I've, I've said it on here before. Like I feel like some guys, and I'm not saying JB is this guy, no. we really enjoy him, but like JB I feel likes like to watch football. Some guys would rather just it. not watch it and then wait for the 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 spreadsheet to come out and be able to be like, now nah, now nah, I can tell you who's good instead of being like, hey, let's contextualize some of this. And I think it's a, a P, they go together. They're married things. And yeah, you know, there are going to be certain guys that don't check these boxes that I go. Yeah, I don't want those guys because, yeah, the film and what they look like tells me that. No, I don't want those guys. What what is happening on that paper is exactly accurate. What is happening with Damian Pierce on that paper may not have been accurate. And it's looking like there's going to be opportunity and he's looking good on the field right now. So that's really my biggest point. So let's get out of here. We rambled for too long afterward. Uh, we appreciate you all. turned a 12 minute video into 42 minute video. Yeah, let's go. That's yeah. what we do around here. Yeah, we got deep in that bitch. Again, big shout out to JB, man. We love having JB on. We're, we're going to try and get him on more as much as we can. We hit him up and he was like, hell yeah, let's do it. We'll get That's a bet together. Fucking great. Oh, yeah. F- over under 50 catches. Well, I don't know if that'll be it. But I think it's a pretty good one. I need to 50 targets. Snoop around. Targets. That's it. Targets? Targets? Come on. What are we talking about? Targets? Targets? All right. We'll catch you on the next one. Subscribe. Love Peaches. y'all. Peace. <laughs>